In our comparison today, we've got the Nissan Rogue and the Mitsubishi Outlander. These are both built on a shared platform, so I'm sure a lot of people are cross-shopping these two vehicles, so let's get into it. The Rogue and the Outlander share a platform that was developed by the Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi Alliance. Despite being mechanically similar, the way the Outlander rides and handles has been determined by Mitsubishi engineers, not Nissans. So you may notice some similarities between the two, but they are unique in their own way. These two SUVs are built in two different factories. The Rogue is built in the U.S. and Tennessee, and the Outlander in Japan. They both have a 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine matched with a CVT. This is a Nissan-derived engine. It has 181 horsepower and 181 pound-feet of torque. The Mitsubishi is a seven-passenger SUV. It is wider and longer than the previous model. The front of the Outlander has the dynamic safety shield design, which Mitsubishi says blends the feeling of protection and performance. The daytime running lights and turn signals are positioned in the upper half and given a thin, sharp shape to improve visibility. It comes standard with LED headlights and taillights, heated outside mirrors, and 18-inch wheels. 20-inch are standard starting on the LE trim. Now these share the same platform, but they differ. The Outlander is six centimeters longer and five millimeters wider than the five passenger Rogue. It has a slightly wider track, meaning the wheels side to side are slightly wider. However, they both have the exact same wheelbase. The Nissan Rogue has a floating roof design and their V-Motion grille. This new model is 1.5 inches shorter than the previous Rogue, and it is a little bit lower overall. They make it look a little bit square. One nice feature, the Rogue offers extra wide rear doors and make it easy to get car seats in and out. The Rogue comes standard with LED headlamps and tail lamps, heated outside mirrors and 17 inch wheels. 18 and 19 inch wheels are available on the top two trims. So you might have noticed there that the Outlander comes with a larger standard wheel, 18 yeah. inches, and a larger available wheel, which is the one we drove, the 20 inch wheels. And I think that was one of the reasons why we noticed the difference in the steering feel and the handling could yeah. be attributed to the bigger wheel. Yeah, it could be. I noticed a big difference with it. It just felt sharper, didn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, more, it felt a little bit more substantive. It felt solid on the road for sure. Yes. Also, a wider track is going to do that. Yeah, for sure. I found that the drive and the handling of both is very good. They are definitely tuned differently. I feel that the Outlander has a more refined and smoother ride than the Rogue, although the Rogue was also smooth. It's just that little bit different. Well, it's interesting because at the end of 2020, we did our top 10 vehicles that we drove yeah. and the Rogue was in there. Yes. So that shows you how much we thought the Rogue improved over the previous version. Yeah. This Outlander just takes it maybe up to just a slightly different uh, notch. Now, we should get right into, they come both with a continuously variable transmission. They sure do. And there's always a lot of comments about a CVT, in particular, the Nissan CVT. Look, Zach and I both drove the Rogue when it came out and we saw a huge improvement with this CVT. I think the Outlander, although it is the same CVT, it feels different, even better than well, the Rogue, yeah, in my they, opinion. So they can program them to meet different needs, yeah. right? So if one brand wants it to be smoother and quieter, or one more performance oriented, they can dial that in. And what they do is they get the platform and then they run away to their head offices yeah. and design these vehicles. So even though they're a shared platform, they're not the same. No, not the same. And even when it came to cabin noise, I found that the Outlander was a little bit quieter than the Rogue. But overall, they are both impressive vehicles, aren't they? Yeah. 80% new parts in this 2.5 liter four cylinder. So that's a substantial upgrade from the previous model. Yeah. And we're assuming uh, upgrades to the CVT. We didn't get a direct figure from them, but take it for what it is. For every comparison video, there's also an Instagram comparison Andrea puts out on her Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea. She puts it out a day before. And then we take some of the comments from the Instagram and we read them out. So let's get at it. I think Rogue is a winner for being good looking. I think both are great and both will help each brand in sales, but it's the Outlander for me. I love the exterior styling as there is nothing else on the road like it. 
I think the Outlander steals it for me initially with the styling package and the warranty, but the Rogue for resale value and brand loyalty. My last few vehicles have been Nissans and I'm really hooked on the brand, but they'd better be careful. Mitsubishi is coming for them. The Outlander did turn my head. The detail of the interior has moved up and will catch a new buyer. The size will have families with teens giving it a chance. Thanks for showing these. Now, because they're a shared platform, they both come with similar standard features like heated seats, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, an 8-inch touchscreen, blind spot monitoring, and rear cross traffic alert. You also get hill start assist, rear parking sensors, and forward collision warning. They do differ on some base model features. The Rogue offers standard heated steering wheel. The Outlander offers this feature one trim up from the base. Speaking of one trim up from the base model, the Outlander also gets a hands-free power liftgate with adjustable height, a wireless charger, panoramic sunroof, a 9-inch touchscreen with Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay are standard on the LE, SEL and GT trims. A 12.3-inch digital driver display, heated rear seats, Quilted leather seats are standard on the SEL and GT trims, and you can get a head-up display on the top two trims. As you can see, there is a big selection of trims with the Outlander. On the Rogue, if you go one up from the base model, you get a panoramic roof, 18-inch wheels, but you have to move up to the top platinum trim to get the motion-activated power liftgate and a 9-inch touchscreen, plus wireless Apple CarPlay and a 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster, quilted Napa leather seats, heated rear seats, a wireless charger, and head-up display. So it's pretty clear the Outlander gets some extra features only one up from the base model. The only thing is the Rogue comes standard with a heated steering wheel. But, but the Outlander comes standard with a third row of seats. Unbelievable. Yeah, so that's the thing. You have to decide whether you want those seats or you don't. And a lot of people might just take it and use them on occasion and, sure. and maybe just leave them down most of the time. Yes. You know, one thing about the interior of both of these is that they use a lot of soft materials, very little hard plastic, which is quite impressive, almost bordering on what you would see in a luxury brand. So I think overall the interiors with the digital driver display and the bigger screens make these two real winners in my books. I would say for mainline brands, the two interiors for the Rogue and the Outlander at the very top of the class. The only vehicle that beats these two vehicles for mainline brands is the Hyundai Santa Fe yeah. with the calligraphy trim that we're test driving this week. But that is a lot more money. Yeah, different price point. So if you're on a budget, these two might be the right choice for you. If you want a little luxury. For second row space, the Outlander is the winner. It has 1.4 inches more space to stretch out. The Rogue has 36.3 cubic feet of cargo space behind the rear seats, and when the seats are down, it's 74.1 cubic feet. The Outlander has 11.3 cubic feet of cargo space behind the third row and 33.5 cubic feet with those seats folded, which is 2.8 less than the Rogue. In total, though, the Outlander beats out the Rogue with 5.6 cubic feet more in total cargo space. No other compact SUVs offer as much cargo space as the Outlander. So the space in these vehicles is very good, especially the Outlander. And I think the comfort level is excellent. The seats are comfortable. The leather that you get is beautiful. Yeah, it, quilting is the new thing in uh, car companies. On the high trims, you get that um, on both of these vehicles. Yes. I think the dash design of the Outlander may be a little bit more elegant and the Rogue a little sportier, but yes. you have to decide. And both of them have a great shifter. Don't we love that shifter? Yeah, the shifter is, is very good. Yeah. I think that they've done an excellent job. As I mentioned a moment ago, we did choose the Rogue as one of our top 10 vehicles of last yeah. year. And I think at the end of this year, the Outlander might be in there. I think so. That was fun. Hey, we'll do another top 10. The Outlander has loads of trims to choose from, and the Rogue has three in Canada and four in the U.S. The Outlander comes standard with all-wheel drive and has a starting price of just under $32,000. The GT Premium top trim is $42,178. 
Now the Rogue is available with a front wheel drive model. It starts at just under $29,000. The first all wheel drive model is just over $31,000. And the top Platinum all-wheel drive is just under $41,000. The Nissan Rogue does a little bit better fuel economy-wise than the Outlander. It gets 9.2 litres per 100 kilometres in the city and 7.3 on the highway. That's 27 miles per gallon city and 35 miles per gallon highway. The Outlander gets 9.7 litres per 100 kilometres in the city and 7.9 on the highway. That comes out to 24 miles per gallon city and 30 on the highway. The Outlander can tow 2,000 pounds and the Rogue 1,350. Well, we haven't even touched on it yet. One of the biggest differences between these two vehicles is the warranty. We don't often talk about warranty, but it's a massive difference with these yeah. two. So Mitsubishi, 10 years in the Canadian market and just three years for Nissan. That's right. Big difference there when you're trying to decide which one am I going to buy? Yeah. Now, I guess they're not aligned in the alliance on that. No, <laughs> not yet anyway. But three years, you know, is okay. That's standard. That's yeah, what most companies... standard. And then you see with Hyundai and Kia Genesis that they're doing five years, which I was super impressed with five years. And then Mitsubishi has got this 10-year warranty. Well, part of that is sort of the summary here. Uh, Mitsubishi used to be known for producing sort of inexpensive cars that, you know, were, were good, but they were not fancy. No. So the 10-year warranty gets you into the dealer. Now they're going to come into a Mitsubishi dealer and they're going to look at this Outlander and go, what? Wait, uh, this, <laughs> this is a Mitsubishi? I yeah. think that's really the reaction. For sure. And we saw it with the Eclipse Cross too. Mitsubishi is putting out wonderful products and people are going to take notice. The Rogue is very good. Like, I like the Rogue. I think it, it looks chunkier now, even though it's a little shorter. It's a yeah. more upright and square. It's what rugged. People, it's rugged. It's what people want. They yeah. want their SUV to look like an SUV. I always joked about Rogue, but there's nothing roguish about it. It no. should be called Steve or Dave. <laughs> you have poor Steve and Dave. I mean, these are okay names, right? Bob, Steve and Dave. Bob is good. Choose, choose your name. All right, that's it. If you want to uh, follow Andrea to get a comment in the future videos, it's motormouth underscore Andrea. Yeah. And please subscribe we drop these how often we drop them every week every Tuesday so we'll see you next week